What lies behind you and what lies in front of you matters little when compared to what lies within you. Robin Sharma The monk who sold his Ferrari starts by painting a picture of what many would consider a dream life. Julian Mantle is a lawyer in high standing who has all the luxuries a man could want. He has a mansion, a red Ferrari, he's the life of a party, and spends most of his time away from work in the company of beautiful women in the nicest of restaurants. This all comes to a halt when Julian suffers a serious heart attack. Knowing he needs a change, Julian sells everything, quits the practice, and goes east on a quest for enlightenment. The book picks up three years later with John, Julian's protege and best friend. John has become successful himself and is starting to show the signs of a hectic work schedule and a stressful life. One night, Julian shows up out of the blue and begins to tell John of his journey to the Himalayas where he met Yogi Raman and the sages of Savana. The sages taught him the seven virtues of enlightened learning, which he wanted to pass on to John. The fable of the seven virtues begins in a gorgeous green garden. In the center of the garden, you'll find a huge red lighthouse. At the base of the lighthouse is a 900-pound sumo wrestler who is only wearing a pink wire cable around his private parts. And as you watch the sumo wrestler, you notice him find a shiny golden watch in the grass. The sumo wrestler suddenly falls asleep for seemingly no reason until you notice the fragrance of yellow roses surrounding him. And finally, as he wakes up, you both notice a path of diamonds leading out of the garden. Each of these things represents one of the seven virtues of Yogi Raman's teachings. The first, represented by the magnificent garden, is to master your mind. The garden is your mind, you see. It is impossible to completely remove negative thoughts, but you can cultivate positivity as you would a bed of roses, and notice and limit your reaction to bad thoughts. Raman says, The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your thoughts. Not only should you be mindful of the positive and negative thoughts passing through your head, but you should be careful of the information that you are consuming. Stay away from negative external TV, movies, and people that will help you calm your inner negativity. Next, the lighthouse represents following your purpose. Goal setting helps you achieve the important things in your life. Writing down your goals leads to happiness in the pursuit and achievement of your purpose in life. The writing down of the goal also signifies that this thought, this goal, is important. Recording your goals helps your subconscious distinguish it from the thousands of other thoughts that you have. Set goals for different areas of your life. Use these goals to keep you moving forward in life and working on the things that really matter to you. Julian tells John that his purpose is to bring the wisdom that he learned in the East back to his family, friends, and the others that currently are struggling in the West. Julian didn't come back on a whim. He came back to fulfill his life's purpose. Practicing Kaizen is the third virtue, and it is represented by the sumo wrestler. Kaizen is the Japanese word for continual improvement. Knowing that you will never be perfect, it is the process that continually allows you to iterate and improve different aspects of your life. Enlightenment comes from the consistent cultivation of your mind, body, and soul. This process never stops, and there is no end. Just like Kaizen, self-mastery is a goal that can never be achieved, only continually worked on. The fourth virtue, the pink wire coil, is the life of discipline. Yogi Raman said, Wage war against the weaker thoughts that have crept into the palace of your mind. They will see that they are unwanted and leave like unwelcome visitors. Discipline and willpower are not gifts. They are skills that can be learned and developed. Each time you say no to the cookie that is not part of your diet, you practice self-discipline and strengthen your willpower. The same goes for running rather than sitting on the couch, or waking up early rather than hitting the snooze button. Systems and habits can help with this. If there is a cookie jar at work, you can make a habit of walking the long way to your desk to avoid it. James Clear, in his book Atomic Habits, talks a great deal about the four-step system that you can use to help you design effective and lasting habits. What better symbol could there be for watching your time than a golden watch? 
Julian explains how the sages of Savannah spend the last 15 minutes of each day planning the next one. They don't want to waste a second. The sages know that time is our most precious commodity. Once lost, it can never be regained again. When planning your day, focus on the tasks and goals that you've set for yourself. Spend time on the things that fill you up with energy, rather than those that drain you. If you knew today was going to be your last day, you wouldn't want to spend an extra second sleeping. So why hit the snooze button today, not knowing which day is your last? The yellow rose represents serving others selflessly. The sixth virtue. There are few things, if any, more satisfying than serving others selflessly. It is good for those around you, and it is good for you as well. Daily acts of kindness, generosity, and a focus on improving your relationships with others will plant seeds of joy that will blossom for years to come. And finally, the seventh virtue, that path of diamonds, is to embrace the present. We are all here for some special reason. Stop being a prisoner to your past. Become the architect of your future. High achievers, like Julian was, often get caught racing through their days in the pursuit of an elusive pot of gold. The problem is that by doing this, you miss all of the good things along the path. Stop to smell the roses, enjoy your time with loved ones and friends, and savor each experience, even things as small as what might seem like an ordinary meal. At the end of the day, your happiness is a choice that you have to make, and it is a journey that you have to take. Remember, what lies behind you and what lies in front of you matters little when compared to what lies within you. Not only is The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari a truly enjoyable read that will make the time fly by, it is packed with lessons that can be applied to your own life to increase happiness and fulfillment. Got a self-help book you'd like us to animate? Leave your ideas in the comments below, and your suggestion might just be our next video. Before you go, hit that thumbs up button to like the video and the book and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll get notified of each new animation that we publish.